Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing and uh, my good friend Smido should be ringing me any minute we're going to have a chat about boxing because that's what, that's what we do on here, we chat boxing so there we go pull in here It's all good. It's all good stuff, isn't it? It's all good stuff. Whoa! Look at that, hang on a minute. Uh, so. Just wait for Smido to ring me now. He probably might not ring now. <laughs> Hello there, Adam, how are you doing? Hello all you hardcore boxing fans, how are you doing? It's Big Adam here from uh, Big and from Wigan. <laughs> it's Big and from Wigan, yeah. How are you, Paul? I'm alright, how are you, mate? Good, yeah, not bad, not bad. Not bad Good before. man. What's been going on? Uh, well, uh, Josh Whale won IBO International Belt and He's gonna. He's probably one fight away from fighting for a world title. All being well. Nice. Mm. Nice. So it's nice. all it's all good, positive stuff. Did, so that's good. I Makes didn't even know that. I didn't even know IBO had bloody international belts. Yeah, they've got an, uh, they've got a continental, an international, an intercontinental, and then the main belt. And Jesus Christ. So it's it's looking good. And obviously it makes me look good, doesn't it? Because I uh, I pestered Dennis to sign him, didn't I? And yeah. he, he's obviously he's done the business, and he Josh three and zero with Dennis now, and he's one knockout, and he just beat a good kid, twenty eight and one, who had yeah. who had a belt, Southpaw, big puncher with twenty knockouts, and he, he just he just just walked him down. He's strong at weight. Yeah. He lives a clean life, Smido. And it's a pleasure to be working with. Obviously, his dad's training me for this fight with Spencer Fear, and so, which is knocking stuff out of me. You know, we're just getting up in, in the morning and going for a walk in cold. <laughs> when yeah. you used to used to silk pajamas, well, I, I sleep in my skids, me like. But when you used to being under a nice warm duvet, it's uh, it's not nice. Yeah. It's not. That's why yeah. I'm. I'm I've got. I seem to have constant snivels and flu and. Obviously, people think I've been taking cocaine, which I hadn't. Although I wish yeah. I had at times, but no, I'm uh, not taking out at the moment. But yeah, so I, I'm in a good place. But Josh doing well at moments obviously makes me look good, doesn't it? After my well, we, Robin we, Wright, we, after my Robin Reed signing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's obviously, um, you know, settled um, promotionally and management yeah. trainer. His dad got matches. Come in, yeah. Got a clear path settled at the way. Is we seeing the bit? We seeing the uh, the pr fruition of that, really. Well, how, how Dennis works it is this. I'm I'm buffer Anna basically. I I speak to Mick on a daily basis, and we speak. We obvi obviously there's a registered matchmaker, James Russell, and we 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 all speak as a team regular. There's none of that. Because what you get a lot in boxing, you get a. Uh, People say, oh, oh, I didn't know we were doing that. Oh, I'm confused. And people tend to throw the old, oh, I didn't know that's what we were doing kind of thing, if you know what I mean. So if everybody's on the ball and they're all on the same page, Mick does the training and he does the matching with a group of us and we talk about it. If there's a problem, we have a meeting. If there isn't a problem, we don't need to meet. We just leave everybody alone to, to, to do the jobs and it's worked. Brilliant. And obviously... Josh don't drink, don't smoke, don't don't party. He's a family man, and they're, they're pretty close knit family, way or family. They all stick together, and they, yeah. they, they just they've got the boxing gym. There's am there's amateur show on tonight. The the, the the it's a conveyor belt, mate. And do you know what? Everybody does the jobs, and it's a, a pleasure to work with. Honestly, I'm really. Yeah. It, obviously, it makes me look good, doesn't it? When when I'm saying, well, let's sign Josh Whale and. And people are like, well, he didn't want to fight at Bantamweight and he's had 11 losses. But them 11 losses don't tell the true story. He could easily be 37 and 6, you know, his record. Instead of 30, yeah. instead of 30, 11 and 2. 
So <coughs> it's made me look good, and if he gets a world title shot at Barnsley Football Ground, you know it, it's quite. He, he could be a world champion next next summer, him Josh Whale. He could be a world champion next summer. I'm not bothered if it's one of the five belts. As far as I'm concerned, he's he's done it the hard way. Nobody's giving him anything, and they don't complain. You know, they just get on with it. There's too many moaners in boxing and backstabbers and. It's just a pleasure to work with proper boxing people, Smido. So I'm in a good place, mate. How are you anyway? Are you all right? Yeah, not bad. Um, I watched the um, Joshua fight surrounded by a load of casuals last Saturday. Oh, you didn't, did you? In, in a pub, yeah. Well, I wasn't going to pay for it at home. I was already scheduled to go out. So, um, so yeah, I watched it. I watched it while he was out. I mean, he got the job done like, but I don't think I would call it a masterclass myself. Uh, well... I noticed a few people, they didn't want to put a video out until they digested it and this and that. And I thought, do you know what? I'm just going to say it as I see it. I put a quick two minute video out and I said, look, that, with a man fighting, frightened to death. You're frightened yeah. to death. Gun yeah. Call it gun shy, don't they, Smido? Yeah. Oh, well, I don't want people to think, you know, I'm just going to come onto Porky's Corner and, and blindly agree with you. But I, I don't know you. you on that. Yeah, I yeah, agree. you never agree with me, you always hammer me. <laughs> so, like, he's fighting there, you know, any time that Ruiz got close or there was a clinch or, you know, there was work on the inside, like yeah. you say, he, he, um, he was looking for, he's looking for a way out, holding on, inviting the ref to get involved. The ref, as I said on the podcast at the weekend, perfect man for the job. Yeah. I think by the time we got to the fifth or sixth round, whenever there was a clinch, Joshua was just looking over to the ref straight away, almost inviting him to break up the action. Um, my, uh, like I say, you've got to be. There is some positives. He's gone out there. His career was on the line, close, close to being on the line. I think yeah. he still thought it was lost. Yeah. But, you know, it, it was a, t it was a pivotal moment in his career. <laughs> he's gone out there. He's got the job done. He's boxed pretty much how he should have boxed, using his height, using the jab, using the ring against a smaller, fatter guy. No problem. Um, he should have probably done that six months ago in hindsight. Yeah. Um, but my, my overriding feeling at the end of the fight was, towards the back end of the fight, the last three rounds, I, I found it quite boring and repetitive. And I was thinking, you know, I'm watching this now, and the likes of, uh, for diff very, very different reasons, Fury and Wilder make that version of Joshua look stupid. Yeah. Um, obviously for different reasons, but I just... Uh, you know, if, if, if that's how Joshua's going to have to fight, this safety first, on the yeah. back foot, on the move, um, he, he's not going he's, he's to have uh, long-term success in that division, I don't think. I agree with you there. For the main reason, he, he reminded me when Vladimir came back after... You know the guy who got shot dead in McDonald's, the South African guy, the left oh, uh, southpaw? Yeah. Sanders. Bert yeah. Sanders, is it? Sort well, of after he came back after that Tonkin, Vladimir, he were... Well, he were very upright, one and frightened to death. Yeah. Very European. Yeah. And I think Joshua's going to be like that now. I think they've got a rebuilding job on him. And it's a bit like when he won the belt against Charlie Martin. They're not going to put him near any danger now. And, and we're go all we're going to hear now is, well, he's coming back after his knockout. And they're not going to put him near yeah. anybody that's going to give him a good, a good run, are they? No, but I think that they can get away with that next year because Wilder and Fury are going to fight each other. They've got a couple of mandatories tied up to Joshua. I mean, it's been over a year since he's fought a mandatory, I think, um, and he's got, and he now is in the ownership of three belts. So I think that they're going to quite easily get away with that narrative of not fighting Wilder or Fury next year at all. Yeah, but uh, Poole left 39, yeah. isn't he? Oh, Poole, I mean, he's long, he's long past it, but unfortunately, regardless of what we think, Anthony Joshua doesn't pick who his mandatories are. No, well, it's all very convenient, isn't it? They could pay step yeah. aside, bunny. Yeah, I mean, we can we can pick up we can pick holes in it, but yeah, he's, he's going to have to fight Pulev. Who, who, but the only the difference with Pulev is he's going to challenge him for size. He's a big lump, Pulev, tall. But he's a yeah, big, I've met him. I met him. Yeah, yeah, he's a big lump. So you know that might, but you know Joshua should be getting that job done. But on Saturday, my my overriding question was. What did Joshua really do that we, on reflection, can say, God, that was impressive? Because well, Ozzy Smith said did, it were a masterclass. No, because all, no, well, it wasn't. All he's, all he's done is do what he should have done in the first place. Use, the, use his jab and the ring against a smaller man. He didn't do that in June, and he did that last Saturday. For me, that was pretty much the only difference. People are talking about Ruiz's um, weight and all that. I think, 
I think in the most... Uh, look, he wasn't in great shape. I'm not saying he's in great shape. But in the most part, I considered last Saturday's Saudi Arabia version of Ruiz pretty much 90, 90, 95% the same as the New York Ruiz. And by that, I mean, when he's coming in at the weigh-in and people are saying, oh, he's nearly a stone heavier than he was in, in um, New York, he weighed in with a fucking sombrero on, fully clothed, trainers, tra- uh, yes. jogging bottoms and a vest and a sombrero. No wonder he's, no wonder he's weighing more, you know? Yes. So I thought that was... A, but obviously, you know, and I said this on the podcast, like, Ruiz this year, 2019, he has won the lottery. Like, at the turn of the year, no one really no one really knew him. Um, you know, he was looking where his next payday was coming on. Now he's a multi-multi-millionaire oh, and never needs, to, never needs to fight again. So that what's happened in June to December, he's had six months there to, you know, acclimatise to this newfound wealth and fame. And, you know, it must be, it, he must have found it difficult at times. Um, and obviously it's gone to his head a little bit, you know, all that silk pyjamas like you mentioned earlier, Paul. Yeah. Yeah, he's uh, obviously his bank, what is it, $29 million or something just from two boxing fights. And then he's, Absolutely. Had, he's had all them, what were we getting, 800000 in appearance on TV and all that. Yeah. And he yeah, signed so, a big I mean, deal with, is it uh, Tecati or something? What's, is that a drink or something? Yeah, I think one of the Mexican, yeah. yeah. But, uh, like, he's going to have a, I think he's going to have a bit of the made honours about him now. I mean, is it... He's yeah. Say even if he got even if he got ten million dollars last week, is he going to take one million dollars to fight Carlos Takam or Chisora or Dillian White? You know, it's uh, it's yeah, he's, he's passed back to the top table. He's going to be a difficult one for him because he's going to have to take he's going to, have to put the odd miles in and take less money. I mean, he could never fight again. He might, he might. I know who, who, who would want to fight again, right? If you've got thirty million plus in bank, why would you want to do this? I mean, why does Joshua do it? Because he wants to be a billionaire, obviously. But and he's got people yeah. in his ear, hasn't he? But who would want to fight if you had thirty million? Enjoy your life. Why get punched in head? You got all that money well, in bank. Great spending on these bloody Bentley cars and that. He might need to fight again in a couple of years. That's worse thing. Listen, trust me, mate. If you want to get rid of your money, your fortune, go start buying yeah. cars and that, and <laughs> you will be relieved of your redries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. But, uh, I watched your um, I watched your Bell used up earlier in the week. I'm glad you've hammered him. He's he's beyond a joke. It's that it's become unbearable. It's Mr. Unbearable. We call him now, Mr. Unbearable. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've spoke to you about him before, but mm. Jesus Christ, he has gone above and beyond. Do you and know the... White drug thing as well. Oh, do you know Tony Bellew, right? Do you know why I did a Tony Bellew four-parter? Because I don't know how to put him into one part. <laughs> right, so it's a four-parter. <laughs> but... I went online and I put Tony Bellew and Anthony Joshua, I just googled it and then it all came up. And what it, what it yeah. does, if you go onto this analytics, it shows you... How many videos Tony Bellew talks about Joshua? Every single video, right, apart from about... He's done over 200 interviews in the last year. But nearly all of them, apart from about 18, he's talking about Joshua. And then if you go on to the actual photographs from each insert, there's there's loads to choose from. It's, all he talks about is Anthony Joshua and it's become... I don't know what there's something going on, I think. There's something not right about man love. I mean, people keep saying to me, you're always big Carl Frotchuk porky, fair enough, but there's something not right about the bromance that's going on there. And I mean, it, it's, it's, it makes everything about Anthony Joshua. Whether he's doing it because he doesn't want to lose any sky dates, or what, or if, if he's just doing it because he's wanted to take Mickey, I don't know, but it's become... It's become a disgrace. It's be, it's embarrassing. It's become cringeworthy, and do you know what? Joshua even looks cringe cringe about it, doesn't he? Now it's that yeah, bad. But in this country, and we've had this for some time, and definitely the case right now is it's Anthony Joshua, and then everything else in terms yeah. of boxing in this country. It's, it's Anthony yeah. Joshua one, everyone else too, and uh, and Bell you. Because he wants to k- carry on earning a few quid, easy few money with with Sky, he's just latched onto that. I mean, I can't really, you know, I can't really argue with that from from his personal point of view. But yeah. some of the look, I mean, I just I cannot believe that you pay you pay twenty five quid, right? You tune in, and Tony Bellew's on the pay per view commentary with his posh voice. I mean, I 
I just can't believe that. Like, this is a man who was fighting, you know, not many months ago, and now he's the lead commentator on what they're calling... Sorry, sorry, uh, one of the commentators on what they're calling one of the biggest events of the year. And Tony Bellew, who is basically a novice with the microphone, is, I just can't believe it. Get someone in there who's got a bit of a more, you know, uh, measured and uh, unbiased stance. I know Paulie Molinardi's done a few bits for us, but he was working over on Showtime. But yeah. there's got to be, there's got to be others to go to. Jesus Christ! I mean, because. It's a continuation of what we saw in Liverpool with the Callum Smith fight and John. Yeah, Ryan. exactly. All, and what all the pundits of Callum Smith, you know, they've either trained with him or they've got the same postcode as him. For God's sake. <laughs> What it is, you see, right, they know with Tony Bellia that he's going to push the Sky narrative, whereas Froch and Malignaggi, they're not company men, are they? Yeah, exactly. We know that. Obviously, people might say they are. Malignaggi, to a certain extent, is, I mean, but I know Carlin, he'll tell it straight, and I know George Groves, he, he he's not a company man either. I'm not a fan of Groves, but I know Groves is not going to push the company narrative, whereas, you know... Tony Bellew, he's nailed on, he's going to be hanging out at back of jo Joshua and Adam Smith in here and Skyers match room. Yeah, you know, he's Mr. Grateful, I mean, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, we know um, we know Groves is a little bit, um, the, the loving with Proch is a little bit forced, but I do quite like it, to be honest. I think they've done some good, a couple of good bits of work together. Down the yeah. camp. They did a bit of a feature, I think, before the main event came in. I couldn't hear it, but I could see it. They were doing a bit of feature on the tactics and, and whatnot. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I think they're doing okay together. I mean, obviously, it's uh, you know, it's all for their benefit of themselves, but I think they're doing okay. They're not going to be uh, round at each other's houses, are they, for Sunday roast? No, you wouldn't have thought so. You can go to Carl's restaurant now and pay nine ninety nine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they'll not cut you on for free. But no, there's no just, discounts there, Bork, yeah. There's no discounts there, off Carl. He loves a pound now. But getting yeah. back to what what Frotch and Groves are doing, look, they're getting paid. From getting picked up at their house, took to the airport, put on a business class flight, fed and watered for a week, and they're getting paid yeah. for it and dropped off at home now. Who's not going to want to do that? Frotch would do that probably for free, man, you might not, but most people would yeah. do that for free. And you're paid for leaving house to getting back to house, whereas... But then, but they're not going to... I can explain it. They're not going to push the narrative like Bellew does, and it's become. I just had to make a stand against it. It's become embarrassing, and it's not that. It has a knock on effect because people see that, and then they think that, well, I've got to behave like that. So you get Andy Lee doing it, and you get Dave Caldwell doing it. I mean, Dave, the journeyman Caldwell, who has he trained from a debut and done anything with anybody? Nobody. He's not done, no. He's had guys who've been champions dropped off on his lap because he's an Hearn man. But let's see how Dave Caldwell does without Eddie Hearn. Because he needs to put his eggs in one basket with them lot because none of the other promoters want to work with Dave Caldwell. And he knows yeah. that. So yeah. they have to put, they have to go above and beyond. Bell, you're right. How many fighters is he, is he a manager of now? How many, mani how many fighters does he manage? Is it three or four? So Bell, you yeah, has to, be, yeah. yeah, he has to push the Sky narrative because it's better for him, for his perks. It gets him out there and he, and it's like Dennis says to me, you can't knock Bell, you poker. He goes, why is that? He goes, because he gets it. He says, I wish Clinton would have got it like him. Even though Clinton's an hard man, he didn't go above and beyond like Bellew, did he? Because Clinton's a man's man, isn't he? Whereas Bellew, he hasn't got the CV, because they're not like that other people have got so what he's done he's put his scent in the mix and he's give us entertainment he's rubbed people up the wrong way he's got his scent out there and he's continuing to do that for himself and for his fighters in it he gets it doesn't he yeah i mean if you look at his cv i mean this is crazy this uh, people always pull me up about this but tony bellew has never beat a champion and he's beat yeah. cleverly he dragged him up 25 pounds and he beat a shot David A twice. That's his world champion wins. Fury, on the other hand, he's got a win over Vladimir and a blown up cruiserweight in Cunningham. And that's it. 
but they get it they get boxing don't they they get that you have to be out there you've got to do something every day tyson fury does something every day on social media doesn't he he keeps yeah. him sent out there he gets it and bell you to a lesser extent he gets it now more probably since he's finished because he knows he's managing fighters and fighters are going to go to him because he's in the mix he's hanging out at back of them at sky isn't he he's going to be pushing it for his fighters same as you see that guy who says he's dillian white's brother he's at every sky show he's in all the yeah. interviews do you know he did five interviews more than joshua in saudi him if you go on to oh, google no, analytics it's all there is it yeah. dean white or whatever he's called wesley snipes whoever he wants to call his son <laughs> He did more interviews than Joshua, five more interviews than Joshua, because he gets it and because he's looking after certain fighters, isn't he? Or so he says he is. I mean, he ain't got a board license. But yeah. bottom line is, these people, they get it, don't they? He's the shook knight of boxing, isn't he? He gets it, doesn't he? Yeah. Whereas somebody like Steve Wood, Steve Goodwin, they don't get it because they've got a bit of pride about themselves, haven't they? Some of and these people, there's a fine, people, line, there? a fine, fine line, line, but like I said, some of these, man. yeah, yeah. I'd man hate, and an man. I couldn't recall the company, my mate, kill me, but these oh. people are thick skinned, they have brass necks, they're not bothered because they're going home at night and they're piling money up. Tony Bellew's not bothered what people say to him. Look, I've got a friend, right, who's an ambassador for Ever Everton Football Club, and Tony Bellew strolls around Everton Football Club, right. Like he yeah. owns the place. He's got the full run of all the training facilities, right? Full run of it. Why is that? Yeah. Why is that? He's not played for Everton. Because he's got his sent out there, hasn't he? Yeah. He's got, he gets it. They get it. He'll pat everybody on back. That's what he'll do. He'll, everybody, he's everybody's best mate, isn't he? Because it's what's in it for Tony Bellew. What's in it for me, Tony Bellew? That's what you've got with Tony Bellew. What is in it for me? It's about me. I'm Tony Bellew. I never beat a champion, but I'm going to make it about me. What you're going to see in the next few months is you're going to see Tony Bellew hanging out at back of Duncan Ferguson. Because that's, you, yeah. that's what you're going to see now. But Duncan Ferguson, he don't put up with any of that carry-on, let me tell you. Yeah. So we're yeah. going to see, aren't we? But Tony Bellew, you have to take your hat off to him tip you out to him he's made millions of pounds out of the weakest cv that i've ever seen out there champion that never beat a champion yeah. but it is what it is we give we give him loads of stick but he deserves it he came on boxing asylum years ago he were on regular because nobody knew him did they yeah nobody yeah. knew him and he couldn't do enough for all, all you boys on boxing asylum soon as he gets a bit of pr he wants to diss it, doesn't he, and go on other people's podcasts. And that's the yeah. name of the game. These people are whores. That's what they are, mate. The whores. They aren't the, the main the moral of the story is this pound notes and they're not bothered who they're gonna trample on about it. I'll give you a perfect example about Tony Bell, you shall ask Adam. Right. Yeah. Tony Bell, you, Paul Smith, Beefy Smith, Callum Smith. They all threw O'Hara Davis under a bus because O'Hara said they were going to do an article in Sun newspaper, am I right? Yeah. They all threw him under the bus. But let me tell you this, Tony Bellew and Paul Smith were on a Frank Warren, uh, on a Sun newspaper sponsored card, right, earlier on in their oh, yeah, career. Yeah, yeah. You remember, remember the screenshot that I put on Twitter when yeah, I were on, I when I wore Ruthless? Nobody said a word about that, and I got death threats over that. So they knew about Hillsborough and the Sun newspaper. Oh, Ira Davis wasn't even born, and he didn't know no about it, but it were all right to pick on Ira Davis. But what about when they were taking money off a Sun sponsored show? Yeah. It were all right then, won it, for Paul Smith and Tony Bellew. Eh? Well, Frank Warren used to have a uh, column in the Sun, didn't he? And have Barry Earn has now, hasn't he? Has Barry got one now? Right? Barry, or he, or he did have, he got the column after Frank. And nobody said a word about the Bellew and David A with Barry Hearn doing his co column in the sun. It were alright then when they were cashing in, wasn't it? You can't have one and other. And this is why I have to do my channel and say my bit. And I have to pull these people about this. 
Tony Bell, you and Paul Smith, I hope you're watching because you fought on a Sun newspaper sponsored card earlier on in your career and you took money off Frank Warren that took money off the Sun. But yet you had to go at O'Hara because he was thinking about doing an interview in the Sun. So get a grip. What's right is right. Don't preach to Big Porky and everybody else about morals. You've got about as much morals as a snake. Anyway, if wait, wait, wait. If you've got a problem, come see me. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Mickey's Athletic, 2 Swinton Road, Sw Mexborough, S64. I'm there tonight. I'm there Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 5 well 7. Boom! Come see me. <laughs> the voice of hardcore boxing. The voice of hardcore boxing. But getting on, let's move on to Dillian White's uh, 